Hi and welcome to yet another episode. What we've got here is a Roland Sound Canvas SC88 Pro. What I want to do with it is change it from being Japanese powered to UK powered. That means changing it from 100 volts to 240 volts. Now inside the power supply unit makes this possible. So removing the lid, there's two screws on either side and then three down the back. And as you can see, the power cable leads in at the back, it goes through a grommet, and then through a ferrite, and then onto the circuit board. Actually, there's a little bracket in the way as well. So what we need to do is sort out that power supply unit. To do this, what I want to do is cut the black wire and move it across. As you can see, there's a few different points, so no matter where in the world you are, you should be able to get it powered to work for your country. All you have to do is remove that black wire and then put it onto the pin that you need. So for me, I cut it from here and then I'm gonna solder it across to the next place, which is this far end bit. There's this strange brown stuff around it, which I wanna make sure I remove later on. I realize I probably could just cut the end off of this power lead and put on the UK plug, but I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that I keep this wire intact just in case I get some device later down the line that needs to have the cable replaced and keep it authentic sort of thing for that particular device. Whereas this device it was sold all over the world, I'm quite happy with doing this modification. This is the UK cable I've got. On the end, it's got the figure eight plug and then of course it's got the UK plug on the other end. So what I need to do is cut off the figure eight but first let's get this wire out of the way. Unscrewing the little bracket here. Carefully moving it upwards, holding onto the ferrite. As you can see, there's a little plastic bracket held on with a zip tie, and there's a couple of more zip ties around the wire itself on the ferrite. I'll just snip these off. So let's make sure we don't throw away this bracket by accident. Disconnect them from the circuit board now and then feed them through the ferrite, snipping the zip ties of course. Put the ferrite to the side and now we've got to get this cable out through the grommet around the back. Making sure there's no bits and pieces from the zip tie hanging around inside the case of course. Now to remove the grommet I find that there's a little bit that's down the side and so squeezing onto that and pushing from the inside makes it pop out. There we go. There's the grommet. Keep that to one side. Now, as I said before, I'm going to keep this wire for something else. I have no idea what, but it might be that it comes in handy at a later time. Say, like I import yet another MSX or something like that. So let's remove the end of the plugs that we need, the figure eight part of it. So put it inside this tool and squeeze and it just snips on through, giving you a nice clean cut. And also what this tool does is it removes the outer jacket to the cable. one 
some swift motion. They cost about £10 these tools and well worth it. It also can be used to remove the insulation around the wires on the inside. In this particular case it's going to left a little bit of copper sticking further up than the rest of them so I'm just going to snip that off. Making sure I don't get that into the rolling device or anything like that because obviously I don't want to create a short. So there we go, we've got two bits ready to go now. What I want to do is put on some crimping plugs. This means that I don't have to mess around soldering. And it keeps it somewhat authentic to what the way it was done before. So let's pick out a red and a blue one. I realised there wasn't quite enough wire, so what I've done is removed yet more of the jacket so that there's some more of the wire. So we put on the plug and then using the same tool as before, you can actually crimp these things. So with quite a bit of pressure, it nicely gets crimped. And there we go. First time doing that. So let's stick on the red one. This is the part of the tool that you use where it's got the red, blue and yellow dots. And the same as before, you just squeeze as hard as you can until it's crimped properly. You can show the wire is still in at the back there. So there we go, we've got two nicely crimped on plugs. All we need to do is feed it through the ferrite. What I maybe should have done is actually put the ferrite along the cable first and bent it round and everything before putting the plugs on. And also what I maybe should have done is fed it through the back here. But luckily there seems to be enough room. Or at least just enough room. It would have made life a little bit easier if I actually fed it through the hole at the back of the case and then fed it through the ferrite and then put on these crimping plugs. So I'll learn from my mistakes and maybe do it that way around instead. I seem to remember it was folded around a few times this ferrite so I've done it a couple of times. Luckily it just about fits. Make sure that when it's connected to the board it actually lines up with the blue to cold and red to hot. If you've used the tap in the bathroom you probably remember how to do that one. Now let's get this grommet back into place. I think it might be quite a squeeze with this cable. I 
I realised with the grommet that actually there was a bit of plastic sticking down which worked with the other cable with this one it needed to be cut back. It is possible to buy other grommets so you might want to look into doing that if you don't want to damage the original. But for me I'll be keeping this Roland until it dies so for me just cutting back a bit of the plastic and made it a nice tight fit now. All that's needed to do now is use a zip tie to keep the ferrite in place around the cable. I think it probably would stay there by itself anyway, but we'll put one on since that's what Roland did with theirs originally. So we'll just squash that down the back there. And then it's time to get that bracket back in place as well. So I had to get a different size zip tie. Thinner the better it seems. So we line that up and we'll get this bracket back into place. Would have helped if I actually put the screw in there in the first place but you live and learn. Alright so that's the bracket back, tie up the zip tie. And then of course snip off the unwanted part. First of all what I want to do is remove some of this brown gunk on the pins. It doesn't seem to be that much but it might be a thin coat. So I'm just using the pliers and using the teeth on there to scrape off. I'm not squeezing really hard, just enough so that it scrapes any gunk off. So let's get the soldering iron up nice and warm. I'm going for just over 300 Celsius. I realise I could unsolder this particular pin but what I've decided to do is just to go straight for it because I'd rather use my desoldering gun but I didn't want to mess around getting that out and then putting it away and stuff. I just want to get this job done. So I've snipped it. There's no harm doing that since it will give me a fresh bit of wire to solder to, so I've snipped off a bit there so that I can see a bit of wire. It's okay that the wire in general is a little bit shorter since I'm going to the closest pin anyway. But don't overdo it. If you decide to, you could maybe desolder from the original pin. Then what I've done is put a bit of solder on my soldering iron, then I've put that onto the bit of wire and then I'm putting quite a bit onto the pin in question. For me it's the 240 volt one. And so that the pin and the wire have actually got solder on them, they should melt together quite easily now. been really careful with the power arm. It's a long bit of plastic from the power button at the front which actually presses the true power button inside the case there. You don't want to burn that with the side of your iron. Turn the soldering iron off, it's no longer needed. And now it's for the moment of truth, so let's turn this round. Making sure that I don't actually touch anything to do with the external power because obviously I don't want 240 volts flying up my arm. Here we go. Yay, it works. That's what I wanted to see. Let's just power it off and then power it back on again. And yeah, it definitely works. So that's really, really good now. I'm really happy with this to say that it's just a quick and easy modification really. It's just a matter of getting the right tools. It is possible to change the battery inside this, but there's plenty of other YouTube videos explaining how to do that. 
but I highly recommend that you do so it doesn't rot through and ruin the circuit board, depending on what you want to call it. I've just made a little bit here so that it does actually show 240 volts. As always, happy gaming!